Hello, my name is Danny Barnes, Assistant Athletic Director for Communications here at Point Loma Nazarene University. We just want to take a couple minutes and check in with Point Loma head men's basketball coach, Matt Logie, and just hear what is going on with him and his program during this time. Coach Logie, do you have me right now? Yeah, hey Danny, good to see you. Good to see you too, Coach. Um, I think even before we can start on anything else, hearing about your program, hearing about your student athletes, I think we just need to maybe take a couple moments and talk about what's going on in the United States right now and hear a little bit about what's going on um, from your perspective, maybe the perspective of your players. Um, can you share a couple words with us, please? Yeah, thanks, Danny. Um, you know, I think at, along with everybody else um, in our country, the last week um, has been very, very saddening, uh, very difficult to watch um, and very challenging in terms of um, how, how to respond in uh, the most productive and, and, and proactive ways uh, to support, you know, those uh, in our communities. And, you know, as a, as a men's basketball coach, you know, we have a, a very unique position in, in that our, our sport is probably the most diverse sport um, in, in, in our country, in the world. And, and because of that, uh, we have tremendous opportunities to have our lives enriched and, and the relationships that we've developed over the years uh, with, with my former players, current players, assistant coaches, um, to see them hurting in this time and, and their frustration and tiredness um, is, is very um, disheartening. It's very frustrating. It's um, very motivating. And so, you know, I think what, what we've tried to do as a basketball family and as a program, myself as a leader, um, has just been to, to try to take the first step uh, by, by, by being available to, to listen, communicate, um, educate. You know, we've had many conversations, you know, individually um, and collectively now over these last few days um, that we hope, you know, can, can be a start to, to – um, actualized change and um, it's been a it's been a very difficult um, time and unfortunately a, a time that we've seen all too often um, come and go time and time again and so um, I, I really hope and pray that um, you know what we're seeing uh, these past few days in this summer will will truly serve as a tipping point to engage our communities, engage our leaders, engage our everyday citizens like myself to um, try to do more and to, to make a difference, you know, not only in our, in our communities, but in our families and our children's lives so that uh, we can stop these cycles. So as you talk about that a little bit, has, as your team has stayed connected and you guys have communicated, has it given you guys the chance to all come together and maybe even talk about some of these issues over these last couple of days? Absolutely. Um, you know, we, we had we had previously scheduled our, our first um, collective team meeting for for Monday, June 1st. We, we obviously uh, kind of just closed the the door on our recruiting cycle and, and, and now know, you know, everybody that's going to be on our team next year. And, and, and many of them um, ha had yet to even meet face to face because of the, the closures due to COVID and, and the inability to have you know, campus visits and interaction like that between them. And so um, it was unique in the sense that, um, you know, our first opportunities to, to meet one another all to meet one another also coincided with um, a, a duty and responsibility to have very um, important and serious conversations. And so um, we've, you know, we, we've tried to do that um, as, as coaches in our program, both individually and collectively, as I said, and, um, obviously, there's a lot of other changes that are going on with um, the response to, you know, our, our, uh, our new reality with COVID and, and academic uh, calendar changes and whatnot. So there have just been a lot, to, uh, a lot of um, things to juggle, but we've tried to, to focus on the things that, that are most important to all of our student athletes, and that's their, their safety, um, you know, their, their health in our community, um, their ability to, um, you know, to, to live um, in our nation um, at, as the rest of us do, that, that don't face those um, oppressions and, and, and racist um, systems and, and, and policies. And so, you know, I hope that, um, 
these these times and conversations are are, are truly starting points um, and, and ways that we can um, engage each other in, in, in growing and educating and, and then um, you know find actionable steps that, that will make a difference so um, those are some of the things that we've been talking about internally and um, trying trying our best to uh, to navigate that road I want to hear a little bit more about that and kind of tie the two topics together. You, you touched on a little bit about your recruiting class. Um, and like you said, bringing them together to become a team on these types of moments. We know that you spend a lot of hours in the gym. You guys, you practice very hard all the time on every day that you're able to during the regular school year. But just how important is it for you guys to become that more cohesive unit that doesn't just be not just the team that can run the plays together, but you guys are together all the time on the road. How important is it for you guys to become that kind of family throughout each year? Well, uh, these times have posed unique challenges in that regard because we, we really have uh, over the years to really strive to, um, to emphasize the importance of relationship building, uh, building trust, um, showing love to one another, being committed. You know, those are our three core values, trust, love, and commitment. And, you know, those, um, those ideals are harder to, to execute when you're not around one another. And so we, we've had to um, find different ways to be creative. Um, we've, we've stayed engaged with our student athletes, you know, by, by sending, uh, you know, opportunities for, for workouts and player development uh, on a weekly basis and, and then individualized uh, conversations, you know, to, to uh, each, each member of our coaching staff and players, you know, to, to just uh, stay connected and, and, and to keep them engaged and, and, and developing as, as student athletes. Um, this past week, you know, the, quite frankly, um, that uh, agenda didn't even cross my radar. You know, I, we've been sending workouts and, 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 and things to, uh, to help with their development as, as athletes, you know, every week on Monday. And um, to me, you know, it, it didn't even cross my mind this week uh, with everything else that we have going on in our country and, and the important conversations that we need to take place. That was uh, where our priorities were this week. And obviously we'll, we'll get back to, um, you know, uh, providing that support as coaches. Uh, but I felt like it was important to, uh, to, to really focus on, on some bigger, uh, bigger things. And, and that makes complete sense. And I, I think that was a very smart move there. Um, Coach, I, I do want to hear just hear a little bit about some of these new recruits, maybe just a little bit more with this class. Um, you guys have a kind of a unique class coming in. I think it's four freshmen, uh, a transfer, actually two transfers, one being uh, a graduate transfer. Just could you just tell us kind of what Sea Lion fans might expect to see next year from some of these guys? Yeah, we're really excited about our new faces. Um, you know, we signed. Uh, a young man in November, Brian Garaki, who, who was the number one ranked uh, player in the state of Oregon. Uh, we're very excited about, about his uh, ability to, to impact our program. He, he's a, you know, a six foot five uh, athletic wing player that can shoot and um, will, will really uh, fit our style of play and, and also some of the needs that, that we have uh, due to graduation. Um, you know, going into this spring, we, we knew that we had the opportunity to, to make an impact um, on our roster uh, through, through the addition of depth. You know, when our season ended this year, I think we were at um, 11 bodies. We had three guys redshirting. And so, you know, the ability to uh, be as deep as we wanted and, and um, practice and compete on a daily basis the way that we, that we would like to, I think will be greatly enhanced with the additions uh, this spring, you know, you mentioned the, the two transfers that are coming in. Uh, Griffin Barker, who was a freshman this past year at the University of Redlands, was arguably the best Division three freshman uh, in the country and certainly on the West Coast, averaged almost 20 points a game uh, in conference play um, in the in the SCIAC conference. And we're really excited about his uh, impact on our program long term. Uh, our, our plan with Griffin is is to uh, to you know, allow him to uh, make this transition to Point Loma uh, next year, redshirt, uh, develop, and, and really uh, have, are excited about the three years that, that lay ahead for him uh, eligibility-wise after that. Uh, Miles Franklin is a grad transfer from Northeastern University who brings uh, 
uh, to our family a great deal of um, experience, having played in the Division I National Tournament at Northeastern, winning a conference tournament in the CAA Conference, which I, I was very familiar with um, from my time back east at Lehigh University as an assistant coach. It's a high level of basketball with, with uh, very, very um, talented players. And, and so, you know, to bring in somebody that's um, had success at that level as a six foot five, you know, long arm, rangy uh, combo guard is something that really fit some of the holes in our roster and, and, and will allow our, our other returning players to, to really excel. Um, you know, and then you, you go down the line with uh, Luke Hopp, who's a, a local freshman uh, entering our program from St. Augustine High School, another 6'6", six, six, um, you know, multifaceted, versatile uh, forward that we can we can put alongside uh, many combinations of, of players. And uh, he's a guy that is a coach's son, has grown up in the gym, really understands the game and, and will, I think, uh, you know, fit our program's uh, style of play very, very well. So we're excited about the young talent that we've got um, coming into the program, along with two other um, Southern California freshmen and, and um, Sam Dudley and Caden Garrett. Um, two, two kids that I think have their best basketball ahead of them and will add depth to our roster and, and the ability to develop and um, hopefully grow into to, um, players that you'll see on the floor making a difference in, in Point Loma uniform. So we're really excited. Um, you know, it's a unique time in, in what we're dealing with as uh, a university and athletic department and, and even as a country. But, um, you know, it was very inspiring to, to see all those faces together. Um, you know, in the last few days, as we've talked and gotten together, um, we have a group of high, high character young men that are excited to be here, that are excited to represent Point Loma. And I think we have an opportunity to really build off the success we had last year. Thank you very much. Um, I do really appreciate you giving us the opportunity to look forward, see what we have, the Sea Lion fans have to look forward to in the future. But I actually want to see if really quick, you take us back to last year. We haven't had a chance to kind of share your story a little bit about the way last year ended. As you mentioned, it was very unique for everybody around that time. But so basically on Saturday night, Brock McKenzie hits the shot in overtime to give Point Loma the, their second back-to-back -back Pac West title. Um, could you just take us through from there from when that game ended and kind of when your season then ended afterwards and the news you heard and how that went about? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, the, probably the most unique thing I've ever gone through as, as a coach um, and just – you know, going from such a high uh, of winning a, a conference championship, um, especially in the fashion in which it occurred, um, that was the culmination of so many months of, of hard work, uh, years of hard work for our returning players, um, their ability to commit to our, our, our coaching staff and the transition that transpired last spring um, and have those dreams and, and goals realized in year one was uh, just an absolute joy. Uh, memories that, that we'll carry with us for the rest of our lives. And, and um, you know, then you fast forward 24 hours from that moment to see our name on the NCAA selection show, start preparing for, for Cal Poly Pomona in the NCAA tournament, uh, watching film, putting game plans together, uh, all the while we are kind of hearing and, and seeing the changes across the athletics landscape of conference tournaments being canceled uh, in the Ivy League, um, the, the, you know, the NCAA tournament uh, eventually being canceled just the day before we were to take, uh, take the court. We actually uh, were at UCSD the morning of the announcement for shoot around. And, you know, it was kind of like a, a dark cloud that just hung over us those, those few days in between the, the PacWest championship and the actual um, decision to, to cancel uh, because you could see things tracking that way, but it was such a uh, unique circumstance. You almost couldn't fathom it happening until it did. And so, you know, I think one of the saving graces for our program um, that might've been different for, for some others is, you know, we, we, we have one senior in Sterling Summers and, I think uh, for for many student athletes that make it to the NCAA tournament, that's their one chance to get there. Um, you know, and if you, to have that that opportunity taken away from them really leaves a huge void. You know, Sterling was an opportunity had the opportunity to be a part of three NCAA tournament teams at Point Loma. He was a part of a team that made it all the way to the national championship game, 
And as I tried to express to him and to our, our team, you know, not a lot of people get to win their last game, you know, each year. And although it didn't culminate with a national championship, you know, his lasting memory as a Point Loma athlete is going to be holding that trophy up uh, at APU. And um, I, I think our encourage, encouragement to him and to, to those guys on, on that team was just to hold on to that and, and, and cherish that memory. And I know a lot of our returning guys feel like there's um, unfinished business and an opportunity to, um, to, to you know, do more. Um, but the, the reality is each year is a different race and each year is a different journey. And so we have to set um, set set the path for this next year, and, and hopefully have an opportunity to uh, make a run in the future. Well, Coach, thank you very much just for sharing a little bit about your program. Um, thank you for talking about just the strive for justice going on in our society right now. Um, I do have a couple more questions where I just want to learn a little bit more about Coach Logie out there a little bit. Um, okay, I would just share with our fans a little bit. You played for your grandfather in high school, I believe. Um, famous coach up there in Washington. Would you tell us a little bit about that experience and maybe what you learned from your grandpa? Yeah, um, I had a very unique experience as an athlete growing up uh, as the grandson of uh, Coach Ed Peppel, my grandfather. Um, he was the high school coach at, at Mercer Island High School in our community for 42 years. Um, I grew up in his gym, going to his camps, uh, being a ball boy for his teams, um, traveling with his high school team when I was in elementary, middle school, junior high. And so having a firsthand look at um, just the years upon years of experiences, team building, relationships, and strive for excellence that, that he pursued gave me a very unique window on, on coaching in general. Um, I... I you know, I think had a very unique experience in, in playing for someone's grandparent. You know, there's a lot of coaches' sons out there. I don't know how many coaches' grandsons there are that, that play for their uh, grandmother or grandfather. Um, and, and that's just a different dynamic that I grew up um, learning how to navigate from, from really a, a young age. And so we, we had some amazing experiences together. We had a chance to, to win two state championships while I played for him. And really for me just absorb um, the, the DNA uh, to, to what made that, that program, that experience so special. Um, and, and really that came down to the relationships that we had with one another as teammates, with our assistant coaches, um, the, the players and young men that he coached that came back to Mercer Island and invested into us as young people, as assistant coaches. Um, I'm, I'm indebted to that. And so uh, as I go, um, into my now 10th year as a head coach, you know, I, I really strive hard to never forget that, you know, my reason for coaching uh, was to pay that forward and to, to provide mentorship and leadership to young people um, that, that helped make me successful when I, when I was young. Fantastic, Coach. That's so great to hear. And like you said, it's great to hear you passing on the legacy a little bit right there. Um, I do have a couple more for you, but I'm going to ask you, as you keep talking about the generation there, it was pretty cool this last year. Your son was out there multiple games wearing a suit on the sideline. How, how, how does that make you feel when maybe you can see that you've also passed that love for basketball on to the next generation as well? Uh, it, it, it was really special. Uh, I, I've, always, I've always said, you know, I, I could care less if, if Luke or Addy, you know, like basketball, love basketball or sports in general. I think there's tremendous value in, in um, team sports. There's tremendous value in, in striving for, um, you know, something greater than yourself. And to be able to share that with him, uh, to be able to share the relationships of our players with him, um, those guys are role models to, to Luke and Addy. Um, they look up to them. Um, they really enjoy being around them. And, and we hear um, the influence that they have on our on our two kids uh, all the time here at home. And so it's just, um, it's a huge blessing. You know, I, I, I'm so grateful for the, the people that were in my life when I was young as role models that I looked up to as Islanders, Mercer Island Islanders. And so if, if we can have a, a same or similar um, degree of, of, of role models uh, and mentorship and, and aspirational um, you know, people to look up to for our children, 
what a what a unique baton to be able to pass down. And, and you know, I, I think back to the the championship game at APU against Biola and being able to, you know, cut the nets down with them and to share, you know, the the Gatorade bath in the locker room. Um, I remember those moments, you know, in the mid 80s and early 90s when I was a child with my grandfather's teams. And, and I know that Luke and Addie will hold on to those memories. And um, that's just a special thing to be able to share. They sacrifice a lot for us as coaches to, to be able to do our jobs well, just with the time demands that that require and, and, and the, um, all that goes into it. Um, I, I really am grateful that Point Loma is the type of place where they can, they can experience these journeys with us and, and, and grow up in, in such a healthy environment. Thank you, Coach. Thank you very much. Great to hear that story. Okay, a couple more about, about you, and then I'll let you go. So right after this one, I'm just going to rapid fire these ones, and I can give you as much time to answer. I'm going to hope you give it back to me a little quicker on this one. Okay, All right. here you go. All right. Have you ever got a technical foul on purpose? Yes. What would you do? I asked for a technical foul. <laughs> <laughs> what is Addie's favorite thing to do with her dad? Uh, play with her pets. Could anybody on your current team beat you in a shooting contest right now? Hmm. I don't know. All right, we'll let that one go. Um, do you have any pregame rituals, and what is it? Uh, yeah, so this past year was probably uh, the start of a, a new long-term pregame ritual, and, and that was just uh, taking the time right before uh, we head out onto the court to, to, to read and, and get away um, and just – um, kind of compartmentalize, find, find, find some space to, uh, to dial, dial back the energy a little bit. And um, I, I thought that was uh, a really good routine this past year. Stole my next question. Favorite book? Favorite book. Um, right now it would be Stillness is the Key by Ryan Holiday. Fantastic. Um, so, Seattle weather, San Diego weather. San Diego. Okay. Long time in Seattle. Didn't know if maybe you're still preferring that one. Post game, you mentioned stuff in the locker room. Who's got the best dance moves on your team? Wow. Um, that's such a tough question to answer and not because there's a lot of good ones. Um, I, I'll just go on sheer size alone because of the impact of my, I'd say Bryson Becker. I could see that one for sure. All right. Last one. You have a day alone with your family. What do you What do you guys like to do in San Diego? You guys go out in San Diego when it gets lifted. Yeah, um, you know, I think if it, if it's a kid day, we uh, we're hitting up the San Diego Zoo or Sea World. Um, both of our, our children have had you know great great uh, days uh, and adventures out that way. Uh, there's so many great beaches. Um, I think one of the things our family loves to do. Uh, is just go down to, to Ocean Beach, Dog Beach, bring our dogs and, 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 and spend some time with them, uh, especially around dinner and sunsets where, where we can just uh, enjoy nature's beauty and, and really get away a little bit. Well, Coach Logie, uh, thank you very much. Just thank you for stopping by, opening up about yourself, opening up about your program a little bit more. And just thank you, everybody, that took the time to listen and hear a little bit more about Point Loma Athletics. Thank you for your time today. Thanks, Danny. Go see Lions. Go see Lions.